Hey, this is a video about the culture of digital gurus, or DG as we call ourselves. I believe the culture in a business is what makes it a success. Culture tends to be invisible. We don't notice it because it's there all the time. But if everyone understands the culture, we are much more likely to be able to keep it and even strengthen it as we grow. And that's the purpose of this illustration. Historically, the business has been made up of lots of individuals or regions, each with their own goals and not necessarily aligned to the business's goals. When I studied the Spotify engineering model, I found lots of the principles can be successfully applied to our business. Rather than operating out of regions, we can form squads. Each squad belongs to a tribe. We started with four tribes, tech, creative, infinite and health. The key driving force being autonomy. So what is a squad? Well, a squad is an autonomous, self-organising team that specialises in one area within your tribe. For example, Cloud would sit in the tech tribe. They have end-to-end -end responsibility for what they deliver. Each squad has a long-term mission, such as make DG the go-to agency in product. Autonomy means the squad decides how and when they do their work, who they work with and how to work together. Of course, the squad missions must all still align to the overall strategy, but some of the shorter term goals can be renegotiated, say every quarter. Our offices will be optimised for collaboration. Squad members work closely together, either on projects or planning. There are lots of different spaces for ideas and knowledge sharing, and lots of open space for huddles to keep continuous communication. So why is autonomy so important? Well, it's motivating, and motivated people deliver better quality work. Also, autonomy makes us fast by letting decisions happen locally in the squad. Although each squad has its own mission, it does need to be aligned with the business strategy, the company priorities and the other squads. Basically, be a good person in DG's ecosystem. DG's overall mission is more important than any individual squad. So the key principle is be really autonomous, but don't suboptimize. Kind of like a band, although each musician is autonomous and plays their own instrument, they listen to each other and they focus on the whole song together. That's how great music is created. So our goal is independent but tightly aligned squads. We're not there yet, but we do experiment a lot with different ways of getting closer. This culture description is a mix of what we are today and what we're trying to become in the future. Alignment and autonomy may seem like different ends of the scale, and more autonomy equals less alignment. However, we think of it more like two different dimensions. So down here is low alignment and low autonomy, basically a micromanagement culture, no high level purpose, shut up and follow orders. Up here is high alignment, but still low autonomy. So leaders are good at communicating what the problems are that need to be solved, but then they also tell the consultants how to solve them. Now up here is high alignment and high autonomy, which means leaders focus on what problems there are to solve, but also they let the teams focus on the how. Down here, low alignment and high autonomy which basically means teams do whatever they want and they all run in different directions. Leaders are helpless and our service offering will be inconsistent. We're trying really hard to be up here, aligned autonomy. The stronger alignment we have, the more autonomy we can afford to grant. This means it's the leader's job to communicate what the business goals and objectives are and the why. It's then the squad's job to collaborate with each other to find the best solutions. So if a new joiner was to ask what the DG process is, the answer could be, well, it depends on which squad. Instead of formal standards, we have a culture of cross-pollination. 
when enough squads use a particular practice or process and you can see it working, it becomes the path of least resistance and a de facto standard. This informal approach gives us a healthy balance between consistency and flexibility. None of this would work if it wasn't for the people. We have a really strong culture of mutual respect. I often hear colleagues around the workplace saying what an amazing job that somebody did helping them either with a job or a candidate or just an issue that they had in general. Often people give each other credit for the great work in which they do. Considering how much talent we have here, there is surprisingly little ego. One big aha for new employees at first is that the autonomy can be really scary. Nobody is going to tell you how to do your job at DG. But if you ask for help, you will get lots of it and fast. There is a mutual understanding that we're all in this together, so we must work together to succeed. We focus a lot on motivation and myself, the leadership and the people team will continue to listen to feedback to always help us improve. Don't get me wrong, we still have plenty of problems we need to deal with, so we just need to keep on improving. Coming into the second quarter of 2021, we have over 11 squads spread across four locations. It just so happens that those four locations are also four tribes, but that isn't necessary. We don't really look at geography in the same way. Some kind of structure is needed though. So currently, squads are grouped into tribes and a tribe is a lightweight matrix and each person in that tribe is a member of a squad and a chapter chapter basically being your niche. So for example, in the tech tribe, you might be in the dev squad and your chapter is .NET. As squad member, your chapter lead is your formal line manager, a servant leader focusing on coaching and mentoring you as a consultant. You might even switch squads, but you wouldn't get a new manager, for example, between dev and cloud. So whilst this paints quite a pretty picture, in reality, it's not exactly true because the lines aren't straight and it keeps changing, but that's okay. To support this model, we also have guilds. A guild is a lightweight community of people's interests where people across the company gather and share knowledge within a specific area. For example, leadership, aspiring leaders, CSR or our service offering. Most org charts are an illusion, so our focus is much more on community rather than hierarchical structures. This may seem like a scary model to let each squad deliver and consult how they choose to, and we do get it wrong sometimes, but we believe trust is much more important than control. Why would we hire someone that we don't trust? Agile at scale means trust at scale, and that means no politics, no fear. Fear doesn't just kill trust, it kills innovation, and if punished, people won't want to try new things. Like at Spotify, we aim to make mistakes faster than anyone else. Each failure is also a learning, so if we fail fast, we learn fast, and then we improve fast. If you kept a toddler in a cot the whole time, yeah, they'd be safe and you'd know where they were, but they wouldn't do any exploring. And yes, with that, they might get bumps and cuts and bruises, but essentially they'll be okay. DG is a fail-friendly environment. We have an internal fail channel, so when something goes wrong, we follow it up with a post-mortem. It's not about whose fault was it, but more about what happened, what did we learn. A problem is only closed when we know what we've learnt, not just when it's solved. All squads do retrospectives every Friday, so we can share information about what's working well and what we can improve next. DG has a strong culture of continuous improvement, driven from below and supported from above. Mario Andretti puts it nicely. If you're in full control, you're going too slow. An amazing new idea always starts with a person and a spark of inspiration, but it will only become real if people are allowed to play around and try new things. So we encourage everyone to spend 10% of their week learning or exploring whatever they like. Has this worked for us? Well, people are natural innovators, so I want to get out of their way and give them time to try things out. If they choose to take it or not, that's entirely up to them. 
But as you can see, we have an experiment friendly culture. Should we engage with an external trainer? I don't know. So let's choose a few to compare. We'll try it out and make a decision. We introduced something called Tech Tuesdays. It worked for a few weeks, but then it faded out and that's okay. Instead of arguing an issue to death, we talk about it. What do we want to achieve? What did we learn? And what will we try next? This gives us data-driven decisions and less opinion-driven, ego-driven or authority-driven decisions. Although we are happy to experiment, we are still lean. So if we try something that doesn't work, we stop doing it quickly. If it works, keep it. If it doesn't, dump it. For example, keep retrospectives, one-to-ones, skip, tech Tuesdays or useless meetings. One of our biggest challenges is growth pain. As we grow, we risk falling into chaos, but if we overcompensate and add too much structure and process, then we risk bureaucracy, and that's even worse. So the key question is, what is the minimum viable bureaucracy? The least amount of structure and process that we can get away with, where we can avoid total chaos. Both sides cause waste, but in different ways, so a waste repellent culture and an agile mindset helps us to stay balanced. I could list a lot of our pain points and challenges, but it would go out of date very quickly. And often a seemingly brilliant solution today can cause a nasty new problem tomorrow. We're growing and everything will be different. But the truth is, problems are short-lived because this company is pretty good at working on and solving problems. And that's the key point. Healthy culture heals broken process. Since culture is so important, we put a lot of effort into strengthening it. And this video is just one small example. No one person owns culture, but we do have quite a lot of people focusing on it. A people team, a leadership team, SMEs and buddies. Mainly though, culture spreads through relationships and storytelling, whether it happens on a call, in a weekly retro, at lunch. We encourage our people to get to know everyone in the business. If everyone keeps sharing their war stories and their successes, we will continue to have a healthy culture. The pandemic has seen a huge change in the way we work and we've proved how successful we can be working remotely. Our teams thrive from being around one another, so we need to find a way that works for everyone. This is why we have no rules around when and where you work. We have offices that are open 24-7 for those who wish to use them, And we have systems that enable us to work from anywhere in the world. Naturally, this brings its own challenges, but we're trying really hard to make it work. We believe a happy person is a productive person. And that happiness is defined by you. If doing exercise at 11am makes you happy, or going out for a really long breakfast, or working more like 8 or 9 o'clock at night because that's when you feel at your most productive... It really shouldn't matter. We don't care where you are at 9.01 or 5. We care about how you are and what you deliver. A culture in any business is just the sum of everyone's attitudes and actions. You are the culture, so model the behaviour you want to see. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the DG story. Thanks for listening.